to rewind really quickly. Um, to six Dunedin Drive in Toronto, um, where I first discovered your magazine on my mom's coffee table. It was a great story about Hayway Wakefield Furniture. And there was something about that, the composition of the pictures, the quality, the attention to detail. And I went back and I looked at that story the other day. And it was interesting listening to you talking about digital everything. Do you not think, though, that magazines, and I'm talking about printed picture on page, don't look as great as they did five or six years ago? That we, we've moved to a point where there is, people look like they've got skin diseases because no one wants to go and retouch the pictures. Digital photography makes everyone look slightly jaundiced. I mean, you look at paparazzi snaps like this from 10 years ago, people look great. Now they've got no texture to their face at all. Or too much. Or too much. <laughs> it's more too much, that's the I mean, problem. there's a sense of craft in that, though. I mean, does that... Well, um, I didn't show real pictures from our magazine, but in our will, I would say that maybe 80% of those photos are still film. Uh, we have not completely gone digital in terms of the well pictures because um, of what you just said. And as the cameras improve, as, um, as, the, um, as, as uh, the scanning and the, well, whatever we, whatever we do and the printing improves with digital photography, I think we'll get back to that gorgeous look. But, uh, but right now, we have not made the total commitment to be totally digital, except in our Everyday Food magazine, which is 100% digital and looks amazing. But food doesn't have pockmarks and pimples and other stuff like that. Oh, and that Haywood Wakefield story, by the way, Susan McGrino, who's sitting in the front row, that was her furniture for the most part. Right, Susan? Yeah. She had a big collection. She still has it. Beautiful furniture. Oh, so you didn't flip it after a few weeks, no. No, she bought more. She bought more before the story came out. That's another thing we have to do. We have to all buy what we're going to write about before it's in the magazine, because afterwards, forget it. I wanted to ask, the original mission when you were putting the first magazine on press, uh, was, the, was, the, was the mission this big, or was it just to get a magazine out every month, hopefully? Uh, well, we worked step by step, of course, but the original mission included having a television show that was complementary to the magazine, having um, hopefully an internet site that was complementary to the magazine, and also have merchandise that was um, derivative of stuff that we would do in the magazine. So it, it was a synergistic plan from day one. The original plan still holds. It's still that kind of uh, business plan and will continue to be so, I think. What got bolted on along the way? I mean, clearly, I mean, business plans are business plans, but um, where was there more innovation uh, than you anticipated? Would you say it was just within uh, the web environment or what's happened with television subsequently? Or Well, in my, in my world, um, we were, you know, going happily along and uh, everything was doing really well. And then, um, you know, I fell in a crack. Uh, luckily, that crack has been pretty much filled in. Um, and, but that couple years was really important to our company. That we, uh, that's why we changed our business on the internet from a commerce site. We had a wonderful catalog. We hope we have now um, changed, put that kind of merchandise, the catalog merchandise, into our Macy's business because it's that same kind of uh, high-quality, innovative pr uh, product. Um, and the internet uh, being a content site, and I always envisioned the internet to be a content uh, site anyway, with, with a merchandise as a sideline. It'll still be there, and we'll still have merchandise, um, because people want to shop that way. But content, 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 it's so easy to get to. It's such an easy way, and, and you know, if you're on a plane, you want to read a magazine. If you're in a car or in a train, you want to read a magazine. But if you're at home and you want something really fast, it's so much easier just to print in uh, Pot Roast 101. If we, if we look at the craft right now, and I think there's, maybe you look back six or seven years ago, a lot of people thought, oh, look what Martha's doing, there's just another craft story, et cetera, et cetera. And she's championing a woodworker here, or she's found some crazy people doing pottery in California. And yet, if you look at America today, uh, there's less and less real craft in terms of industry right now. I mean, do, would you say there's almost a, a, 
a political side to your message? Because we found this great moccasin maker in Monocle in our first issue, a company yeah. in Wisconsin. They make about five, six hundred pairs of shoes a month. That's all they do. But well, they said if they, were, if they didn't make in America anymore, no one would buy their shoes. Right. Because their biggest market is Japan, for example, and they can sell their shoes for $1,000. And in doing that story, we found that 95% of shoe production in America has gone offshore in the last decade. Yeah. Is craft not just in the cottage industry sense, but in a wider sense? Is it something that you're passionate about preserving? Do you oh, see it as political? Definitely, and, and I, I continue to do so. We had a basket maker on the show just this past week uh, who makes the most beautiful baskets, but that used to be a craft. It is now considered an art. So all these craftspeople that we're talking about have really become artists in the uh, terminology, in today's terminology. You, you have to call them an artist because the, and the broom maker, oh my gosh, we went to Worthington, Vermont, uh, Worthington, Massachusetts, where this man makes brooms in the shaker, in the historic shaker way, mm -hmm. using broom corn. Broom corn used to be grown in many, many places in the United States. Yeah, he has to ship it in now from Canada to get broom corn. But it's very interesting to watch him do his craft. Uh, he makes a living. But he is an artist. I mean, I have to categorize him as an artist. And I will continue to look as you look. I mean, I, I open up Monocle. I spent all, you know, one whole day over Christmas vacation reading your big 2008 issue, the first issue. What a great magazine, by the way. Thank and, you. And, um, and you are ferreting out the same kinds of things that I'm looking for, in a, in, but in a different, on a different scale. You're, you're universal and all over the United States, all over the world. And I'm pretty much focused on uh, the United States at the present time. Next administration, <laughs> if you got a phone call, uh, what would be the, yeah, what would be the dream secretary job? Or maybe you don't want secretary, maybe you want to be vice president, but uh, <laughs> what does the U next U.S. administration need? Um, well, of course, we need a new president, and, um, and hopefully we're, we seem to be going in the right direction there. Um, I just think that maybe uh, change, it, it would be change enough to have a woman. I mean, we're talking about change, change, change. Maybe just a different view might help the United States a lot in its next eight years. Um, but um, I'm not looking for a job in government. I have, a, I have a really big, important job right where I am, and I have a lot of stuff to do, and I can help. I mean, I certainly can help. Um, I can help paint the White House. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, whether it be education, um, whether it be labor, I mean, what messages you know, would you like to pass on to the well, next Well, the United States needs a lot of help in a lot of different areas. Um, we certainly need a lot of an infusion of not only money, but also encouragement in the world of education uh, and, I, and in the world of health. I've, I've recently funded a, a wing at uh, Mount Sinai, a, a whole, a whole um, for, the, for geriatric medicine, where um, we will help people, baby, these, you know, we have so many baby boomers coming of age. They're going to be 60 years old. And uh, in the next 10 years, we have so many millions of people coming into middle age. They are going to need to think about getting old, the older generation. They're going to need help planning their future. They're going to need, uh, so we're working on that at uh, the Martha Stewart Center for Living at Mount Sinai. Um, and I hope that, that we're creating a prototype there that will uh, be uh, able to be rolled out in many hospitals across the United States. That's one focus. But it's education of the young. Um, it's encouraging higher education in the, in the college students. Uh, we need so many, many more highly educated people. Um, and it's also, um, it's also the health, the health of our whole nation. So there's, a lot, there's lots to do. Do um, students still need to learn how to, uh, I don't know, make brooms? I didn't uh, mention the environment, but that's of utmost important <laughs> also, of course. Absolutely. Ugh. But just, I mean, I'm going back to that sense of craft. Um, do young people still know how to, do they need to know how to do things with their hands? Young people crave doing things with their hands. That's why they're so good with their thumbs. But um, I really think that thumbs are not the only digits that they have to use. And the more things that children can have at home when they get home from school, uh, the more projects they have to sit down and complete, um, I think the better off um, they will be. 
Uh, they need they, they need um, they need direction of the parents, and they need encouragement from their teachers to do all these other things. It's all it's all well and good the hand-eye coordination and the and the sports, but it's also a lot of other things that children should be encouraged to learn. Finally, your media brand. I mean, just Martha Stewart name so closely attached to it. I'm sure your board and people ask you this question all the time, um, and you probably get rather bored of it in your board meetings. Uh, <laughs> but what happens with successorship uh, when you're so closely linked to a brand like this? Uh, well, it's a success and we're, we're trying very hard to make Martha Stewart like Estee Lauder um, or Ralph Lauren. Uh, the, the name is very strong. The brand recognition is very, very um, high. Uh, the quality has to remain extremely good. As long as all that continues, then, uh, you know, Martha can take a vacation. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam and Herren, Martha Stewart, thank, thank you. you very much.